sad if you don't. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, so welcome to Live Talk with Dom. It is the second episode. I'm super excited because I know that our guest today can add so much value to you, to, your, to my audience. Um, it's a man of many expertises. He is a meditation teacher. He's a transformational coach, an author, chiropractor, public speaker, and how, oh man, he has so many new things. Um, but one main event that comes back is basically transformation. And if you look at his website, one of the first things that comes across is how to live the life you were mean to live. He explains that many people go through life unhappy, overstressed, and never connecting with others in a meaningful way. He said, let me teach you how you can make simple changes to your life that will make a profound impact on yourself and those around you. That's exactly what we're going to talk about today. My guest today is David Shiner, and um, I'm super excited. I hope you're super excited because we're going to add some very valuable information. Um, David, do you want to add anything to what I just said and have, explain a little bit more about who you are and where you come from? Thanks, Steph. I'm just really happy to be here and to have this experience together. I already feel the great energy coming through and we're just getting started. Um, for me, yeah, it started at a real young age and I'm sure we'll get into it. So I, I really want to hear what you have to ask and we can go off of that. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, like I said, we talk a lot about transformation and I'm sure you've been through a lot of transformation, but what for me is interesting, how do you come to the point where you actually become a transformational coach? Where it comes that interest from or what is basically a little bit of, of your background in that? Well, I think in order to have that spark if you will, inside to become a coach, a transformational life coach, a, or more of a guide for others, if you will, comes from having been through life challenges oneself. Mm -hmm. And to be able to be faced with those challenges and be willing to face them and to break through them no matter what it takes, having that thirst and that hunger to get to the other side of those trials and tribulations in one's own life, and then have that in, inborn or inner desire to, to be a stand for others, to be that for others, to help guide them through, not to provide them with the solutions and the answers, because that's more of giving advice, which I like to equate to adding vice. When you add vice to something, you're constricting it. That's not helping people um, on their journey. So to be that guide and to provide pointers and arrows for others, because people have done that for you in order to be able to break through those barriers and challenges yourself. So, yeah, my next question actually within that is like, do you think that facing challenges and overcoming challenges or how you how you face those challenges is something that is natural and comes from within basically you're born with? Or is that a skill set that you it's teachable and how to face challenges or how could you explain about that? I think it's both. I mean, it's. It's definitely both. So to have that desire within is important and having that knowing that the potentiality and the probability exists inside to be able to transform through whatever those life barriers are. And then to be able to put the ego to the side which is extremely challenging and it's a process and a journey in, in and of itself to be the student where others can teach and guide you through that process of growth, of overcoming the challenges. Because for the one that's interested in breaking through, 
I actually just read something about this on Instagram. One of our friends actually posted something that the desire might be there to have those breakthroughs, but actually to do the work and to put in the effort that it takes to overcome and reach the top of the mountain, so to speak, that's a whole other conversation in and of itself. What are some of the, if you talk about like tangibles and desires and and you want to have, could you give some examples about some simple changes or simple steps you can might take if you have the desire, but don't know really where to start, you want to change your life and you know, you have to face some things like what are some small things you can do to start making changes? That's an excellent question. And my response is in the form of two questions that one may want to ask themselves at the beginning of that process. And the first question is, what do I want? So many people are, because of the way we're programmed and conditioned by society, we're externally driven, where we're constantly looking outside of ourselves for the answers. Whereas the answers to these problems, uh, quote unquote, are within ourselves. But it often takes a mentor or a guide to be able to bring us back within ourselves to remember that the answers to the questions that we have or what we're seeking outside of ourselves is actually within ourselves. So the first question to ask is, what do I want? Most people don't ever ask themselves that question because they're, they think because of their thoughts, their thoughts are actually telling them what they desire, which is true, but it's not truly what they want. So question number one is, what do I want? You get clear on what you truly want. Like you wanted to start this podcast. It was this desire. You wanted it. And then question number two, which I'm sure you went through without even asking yourself this question for the podcast creation is what would that do for me specifically? So now if you take a look at that question yourself right now, you can see what would starting the podcast do for you specifically? And you can answer that in your own mind. So those two questions are really important to start with and then find a guide, find a mentor that can help you with some critical pieces that unless you implement those, you probably won't be able to have those breakthroughs you're looking for or at least if you do have them sustainable. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do I want and what does it, what does it do to me when I'm doing it? Right. What would that do for me specifically? What would it do specifically for me when I'm doing it? So then my next question is when it comes to you talk about mentorship, find a mentor, find someone that can help you through the process or where you want to go. Um, For me, I'm pretty like clear in where I can find those people or where I can what I look for in a mentor or someone that guides me in and it doesn't have to be per se someone who's hired sometimes it's a friend sometimes it's a family member some it can be really close to you um what would you advise to someone who's like okay I want to do this in life um I want to look for someone but I don't really know where to start what would you have like a couple tangible things that to look for in a good mentor, because if you're guided by the wrong person, you will never get the results that you desire or you get maybe go on a wrong path. So getting like wanting a mentor is one thing, finding a mentor is something else. So can you explain a little bit about your advice on that? Yeah, that's an excellent question because there's a lot of people out there that claim to be coaches when in actuality they haven't been through capital i capital t it themselves so you want to seek out somebody that's been to the top of that mountain that you're looking to get to and they've climbed and they've trained and they've struggled and they got hit with so many challenges they got knocked down so i mean online these days you could search for a mentor 
but I encourage people to mainly go off of a referral and seek out friends and um, who have worked with somebody themselves or through a network that they're involved in, a community that they're involved in. Another way is to meditate and ask those questions. What do I want? What would that do for me specifically? Go, in, go into meditation. And in your meditation, use what I refer to as sacred visualization. And when you're visualizing, really feel inside, feel that mentorship experience. Get into that state of how it would make you feel when you're in that relationship with whoever this person is and then visualize the person and send that out to the universe. Hands are the universe. Once you're clear on what you want and what you desire, mm -hmm. know, know that it also desires you. Mm -hmm. And because we're not separate from the universe. It's recently, been, it's recently said that we are the entire universe manifesting through a human nervous system. And we are our nervous system. Wow is right. So we are our nervous system, which is a mirror image, a hologram, if you will, of the entire universe. So when you're clear on what you want, you send that vibration out to the universe, you're going to manifest it. Yeah, that's that's powerful. That's powerful right there. We are our own universe. That's like why it's like from personal experiences, sometimes like I'm sure like you have that multiple people like then when things come full circle, things that you've talked about five years ago, a couple of years later, you experience some stuff or why vision boards are so I'm super, super visual. So I make visual boards, brainstorm, like I can write my whole plan on a whiteboard and stuff like that. And I physically like if I do that and if I talk to people about it, it's so weird how things like a couple of weeks later come back in a conversation or when I meet certain people or how things come together when things happen for a certain reason or I don't personally don't really believe in coincidence, but that's super powerful. Like we're in the universe. So put out, visualize what you what you seek in someone and write that down or do something with it and you will attract it. So do you think that that's the same with, uh, talk about higher vibration. Uh, it's like when you're in a high vibration, look very positive energy and then very high in your vibration, you also attract positivity. When you have negative thoughts, when you're uh, more in, 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 in a downflow, you also attract more negative stuff. Is, is, is that kind of related to that? I think so. And we can probably both attest to that in our own lives from experience and you can actually do it as an experiment and, and notice the results in the community that we're both involved in and in, in build your life resume uh, put on by Jesse Itzler. I mean, I think we do have our own vision board that comes with the community called the, the big calendar and that's our vision board. I mean, we put everything on there that we want for the whole entire year. So wouldn't you agree? I mean, that's kind of what we're setting out to do with our trips and our relationships and our Kevin's rules and our winning habits and our Masogi, that one big thing we want to accomplish. So that's one of the things I like about that uh, calendar in, the, in this community. Mm -hmm. And the community that we're involved in and build your life resume in the calendar club. I mean, look at these people that are up to some great things. Yeah. High vibration, as you're talking about. This is not a low vibration community. Mm -hmm. So we're situating ourselves and surrounding ourselves with people that are in high vibration, that are inspirational, that are empowering, that are motivating. And look where we are today on this call together yeah. because we're both raising the vibration for humanity yeah yeah no that's 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 really cool and, and what you said about surrounding yourself with people that are take you also like on the same level and just have the same inspiration in their own ways but also 
can take you to that next level. We always talk about, and, and I have another community where I'm part of, we always talk about like, you are the person, you are the, how you are is, so is uh, determined by the people around you. So like the five closest people to you is basically can, will determine your future if that's the people you will be surrounded by for the rest of your life. And I think that's why, and I personally, I think that we underestimate how powerful that is because I know for myself, if I'm surrounding myself with certain people, I take over their, the words they use. I take over their habits. I take over, you know, you know, like when you're in college and we make fun of each other and we do all this stuff and we do all this fun, like you take over the habits of your friends. And that's the same with the build your life resume club. Like it inspires you like, oh, you have you're big in meditation, you're big in these things. And we talk about them like, hey, like, let's try it out. And I'm going to start doing it. But if I'm not exposed to it, I'm not I'm aware of it. So I will never try it out. So that's that's super, super powerful what you just said. Uh, let's that we talk about meditation. Let's dive into a little bit about I'm very passionate about meditation. So I want to dive in that a little bit. Since you are a master of meditation, First of all, how do you become a meditation teacher? And tell me a little bit about that and that journey of becoming that. Well, it's interesting. You talk about surrounding yourself with five people and you become that. It's similar with anything that we practice in life. Mm -hmm. When you surround yourself with these five people, you're practicing, you're absorbing your experiencing and the same thing was with me with the meditation i've been teaching it for 30 years and ever since i was little my mom brought native american elders to our home for weekend retreat programs at my house where other people would come and there would be these native american um ceremonies, the, the medicine wheels, the sage, the, 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 um, the burning of the sage, the smudging, the cleansing, all of these rituals. So I was exposed to these from my youth and it really sparked a fire inside of me that I felt was already there, although it really burst it up into larger flames and through those experiences, I started leading sessions um, when I was young and became a, a life coach at a young age. So the meditation teacher, the transformational life coach happened many years before the chiropractic experience um, happened. And similar, I wanted to mention one thing and then I'll finish this up that you said before, how does one become a transfer, transformational life coach or a coach or a meditation teacher? Buyer beware, because right now you can search for these and you'll find tens and maybe even hundreds of thousands of people that claim to be a life coach where they took a weekend seminar. And a, a, a meditation teacher well because they listened to the calm app a few times or went to some meditations at a retreat center over the years and now they're qualified to be a meditation teacher it's something much more than all of this depending on what the person's aim is who they're looking to become for themselves first and then for humanity, knowing what they want, knowing what that would do for them specifically. If one wants to be a meditation teacher, what's the reason behind that? Is it an ego-driven thing because they want to look good? Or is it a self first, a self healing journey where they heal themselves and forgive themselves and accept themselves for who they are? And they have the practice of surrender deeply rooted in the core of their being. There's a lot more to all of this. And one of the people that I really appreciate who's part of the calendar club and build your life resume 
he's on the 30 Days of Excellence with Jesse and, Ch and Mark Brown is Chad Wright because Chad Wright is dialed in. Chad Wright is super dialed in. And he doesn't claim to be a meditation teacher or a life coach, but he's dialed into the source. If you've ever heard him speak, and he has courses, I haven't taken any of them yet. I will one day. To be around that energy, there's certain energy that some people have that you want to be around because they're tapped in. And he's one of them. So if he said, hey, I'm a meditation teacher, great. I'd like to go sit in on one of his meditations because he's dialed into the source. Those are the people that it's useful to be around. And if one is looking to be a meditation teacher or a, a life coach, Chad's been through it. You I could tell he's been through the ringer, the trials and tribulations the challenges of life, and I have too. And you could tell when those people have because they, you feel it, and it's in here in the heart chakra, and that's where the person's coming from. And you also know that when somebody's faking it and they're claiming to be something that they're not, and when you're searching for a meditation teacher or a life coach, check in check in with that yeah and know when when to turn around and walk the other way let me just finish this part with this staff because you brought up an amazing point and that's the concept of boundaries and setting healthy boundaries there's a book that i want to recommend to everybody if you're okay with that and the book is called Boundary Power. It's a purple and black book. It's a workbook. I want everybody to start learning how to set healthy boundaries in their life. Because when we're born into this society that's boundaryless, I mean, just take a look at the media mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and what it's throwing at us every day, all the negativity. We have to start learning how to set really healthy boundaries for ourselves. Do we want to watch that stuff? Do we want to pull that up on our phone? Do we want to allow people to bombard our minds with all of this fakery and all this negativity? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People, places, and things. So boundary power, amazing book. Wow, that's a that's a really good, that's a really good um thing you said that about boundaries because. It is so the, the thing is, and then what I've learned, especially in the past couple of months, actually, is like you can really distinguish like unconsciously what's real and what's not real. So if you are constantly put yourself in a situation where even with like I'm I am, I will tell you, I hate scary movies. I hate it. I you can ask my friends, I can just I don't I will not watch it with you. That's I'm sorry. But the one thing that's because I don't want to watch it is because I really get scared. Yeah, because I honestly like when when the, the movie is over and I go through my bathroom, I'm scared. I feel scared. I'm I don't feel comfortable walking through the bathroom. I walk to 25 times a day in daylight. But when it's dark off a scary movie, I'm scared to do that. And that's because like and when you do that on like a very daily basis and constantly have like certain influence in your mind, you start thinking a certain way, you start living a certain way. And when it's constantly negative and fearful and stuff like that, you live your life in more fear. But if you constantly have your life exposed with positivity and uplifting people and motivational and how to face challenges, then you li start living your life towards that. And But having set for yourself a boundary of like, okay, this is where I want to, how I want to live my life. So that's why I don't watch the news or watch the news on a limited base. And learning how to do that in a healthy way, very powerful, very powerful. Definitely. I like that. <laughs> yeah. So um, oh, I just had something else that I want to say um, when it comes about teachers, um, when you talked about like chat right and about yourself, like going through experiences and how you feel that and actually want to give like maybe like a tip to the audience or to people that listen to what I always 
do when I'm looking for a mentor or feel that this person can add value to me is how I am listening to someone. Because um, when Chad or Jess is talking, man, I'm almost in the screen. Like, I want to listen. I feel that they, I just feel their emotion and their passion for what they're doing. And that's something that you can't really explain with words, but it's definitely something that you can feel. And I had got the other day a conversation with one of my best friends about how you, after a conversation and a year later, a month later, or five years later, you don't really know what that person said to you, but you will always remember how that person makes you feel. And that's the same with mentorship. It's like if you are around someone and you always go out better, to, if you always come out better the conversation than you went into it, you know that a person adds value to it and you know that it, that person is there to help you. And um, so talking about mentorship and about um, looking for mentors just popped up in my head. That's something to keep in mind. Uh, right. I'll, I'll just add to that since I didn't really hear a question. I think you asked it at the beginning. So I'll answer it. And the word is authenticity. When you are around or listening or watching somebody, <laughs> there's an authenticity that's either genuine or not. And it's important for people to listen to others and without having in their head what they're wanting to say next. And if you forget what it is that you wanted to say, because the ego, I'm coming back to that right now, is always looking to be superior to the other. And it looks at everyone else as the other, and it wants to make them as other as possible. Okay. So the reason is, is because the ego or the egoic mind is what drives the person without the person knowing it. It's what keeps people, this is opening up another topic, in the past and the future. And the future is where most people spend their life. A lot of people that have a anxiety and worry and fear it's because they're living in the future even though they think they're in the present or they're in the past which is where regret lives but when you're listening to somebody and when you're for let's use jesse itzler as an example when he talks about being where your feet are in the build your life resume program he's talking about be present be in the moment and that's a big part of my teaching as well. We have that in common. He's coming from that space when he's speaking, and so is Chad. And that's where I keep myself as well when I'm speaking. So if you feel a presence, if you feel a calmness, for example, while I'm talking on this conversation, it's because I'm in the now. The only dimension that truly exists its the only real dimension that we can live in. And that's the being where your feet are. So the authenticity and the genuineness is what we feel when we're listening to those people. And just to end this little piece that you brought up, which is such a great point, is it's useful for people in their life to start becoming and to start recognizing areas in their life that they've been being inauthentic. So start getting authentic about areas in your life that you've been being inauthentic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what that means is an example of that, take a look at re your relationships, take a look at your work, take a look at your relationships with your family, with your kids, with your significant others, with your friends. Are you being real? Are you being authentic in these part areas of your life? And if you're not, take a look at them and see how can I shift those? How are they empowering me? How are they empowering others? And start really drilling down on those areas of inauthenticity in one's own life so they can really start growing. That's where growth comes. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So being present is 
is goes hand in hand with authentic, authenticity. Um, and you need pres being present and authenticity. Authenticity. That's a hard word for this person to say. Uh, you need presence and authenticity in order to grow, or at least in order to grow to your full potential. Okay. Now I want to like okay, and I want to dive into those tools a little bit. So if you talk about someone college kid or young adult or someone who's like okay i want to become more present i want to become more uh authentic um i i think about okay i feel like in those situations i haven't been myself i feel like i'm in a shell can really express myself how what would you advise to them okay what are the first steps i can take to get more in tune in that number one make a list of all of the areas in your life where you feel that you're not being authentic. That might be a little challenging for most people because again, they're run by their ego. The ego is having the person live mostly an inauthentic life because to live an, an authentic life means that you have to remove the veil over your eyes, the shell, the thick shell, you mentioned the shell that is covering our true self. And that's scary. Um, you think movies are scary. Growth is scarier. <laughs> for people. Most people don't want to grow. They just want to stay in that comfort zone, that level of safety. So first, it's making a list of areas in one's life where they notice taking an inventory, which is useful in and of itself, because they're not typically doing that, of where they're living areas of inauthenticity. And then when they recognize those, being willing to make certain changes in their life to become more authentic. Now, this is super deep, Daph, because it goes all the way back, if you will, to when uh, the personality develops. That's the first place to look at and that's when the person's born uh, because people are born into this society that the cards if you will the, the the deck of cards the the cards are already dealt before the person shows up because society places these benchmarks in place for the human being to move through at certain periods of their life for example we're born we go to school, um, when we learn our name and we say our name for the first time, our parents throw a huge party because they think that we now we know who Johnny is. Johnny knows who he is because he said his name. His name is not who he is or she is. The person is something else entirely. This potentiality of transformation just like the caterpillar has the potentiality within it to transform into its true nature as a butterfly, this it's a completely different species. Totally, we have the same within us. Yeah. The, the same way that a, an acorn has the promise of an oak tree within it. Most acorns don't transform into oak trees. Most caterpillars don't transform into butterflies. And most of the 7.8 billion people on the planet will not and do not transform into their true nature. So to answer your question, one must take a look at the spotlight and turn it on themselves and be willing to look in the mirror and look in their eyes and see themselves for the first time and look into their soul and into the depth and the core of their being and be willing to go on that journey of self-discovery. Uh, because to be quite honest and blunt and frank, um, people are not who they think they are. There's something else entirely. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 amazing that you say that, and that's I think, man, from like 
conversations I have with other people, like even like fellow students, like old students or friends or anything like that, we have this, we are on an age where we ask more questions to ourselves. Like, are we really who we are? What do we even want to do in life? We get that question in our lives maybe 20,000 times where people ask like, what do you want to do in life? Who you want to be? Like, what is your dreams? What are your goals? But how do you know that if you haven't really experienced anything yet or any try it out yet? And it's pretty a pressureful question because the moment you answered in a certain way, you kind of feel obligated to go that route. It's very hard to change after you have said a dream out loud you want to go to, you know, it, it, with, um, for me, example, I always thought I'm going to be a professional soccer player. That was my only dreams. Only thing I had 24 seven a day. That's what I was dealing with. And now coming to the United States and, and experiencing so many other things, my desires changed. I, I see, I open my eyes in a lot of other ways and see that I want to go a different route, but it's hard to also be true to yourself and say to yourself, I think it's okay to not achieve the dream I had first and change directions. And, um, but that will never come out if you're not looking in a mirror and look to yourself and like, hey, let's explore what I really want to be. Yeah, I, I everything you just said is actually what I speak on, on on a weekly basis at colleges and universities across the country. I guest lecture at these major universities and brings undergraduate students through my um, uh, presentation on just that. If you wouldn't mind, I'll speak on that just for a moment. Yeah, I would love to. So. Again, if one doesn't know who they are, they're going to go towards typically a career that other people tell them they'd be good at. Mm -hmm. They're well-meaning people that are telling them that they'd be good at this. Although when you take a look at the people that are telling them they'd be good at it, they can't stand what they do for a living. So why would you want to listen to somebody that doesn't like what they're doing with their work? Again, it comes back to the question, what do I want and what would that do for me specifically? I like to also phrase it as what do I desire? What makes me itch? What would I really enjoy doing with my life? I have thousands of university students, staff that come up to me and they tell me, I want to be a painter. I want to be a poet. I want to live an outdoors life. I'd like to ride horses for a living. But as you know, you can't make any money doing that. And I tell them, forget the money and you go do that. Because when you follow the money, you're completely wasting your time. Yeah. When you love what you do, it becomes an extension of who you are and you won't go to work one day in your life. Your vocation, your vocation turns into your vacation and you tap dance to play every day. You become a magnet and people will seek you out no matter what it is that you have to offer because they want to be around that energy. I, I love what you're saying because that is exactly like, what attracts me to talking to people because I truly believe that people that are passionate about their what they're doing they glow different and when I am around people that glow different because they're fully talking about a topic they're passionate about you trigger my curiosity and we're going to sit down because I want to know what you're doing and why you're doing it and I think that that is so awesome but that's such an underrated quite like it is such a powerful question, but it's so underrated because nobody asks you that. And I think that when you said about people follow the money a lot of times, but with, with you can have a lot of money, but you can be miserable. And it doesn't mean you're happy if you have a lot of money, but when you do what you're passionate about and you make your business out of that passion, then the, I believe then your money will flow at a certain point. Exactly. And, and because you attract things different. And so I think that's that's very powerful. And um, but we're also like, for example, I'm in an age that where even younger or older, a lot of people don't even know what their desires are, don't even know what their passions are. What would you say to them to 
figure that out. Okay. Oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. It comes in the form of a series of more questions. Uh-huh. Uh, and then I take them through this exercise. Number one, what do I love? It's so important for people to make an exhaustive list of how they love spending their time. If you're going to be going to something for 50 years and you don't love it, it's going to erode your self-esteem. You're going to get sick and you feel like you've hit this proverbial glass ceiling. That's 90% of the people on the planet that work. They can't stand what they do. They get sick just thinking about going. The other 10% love what they do because they answer these questions. So again, number one, how do I love spending my time? With who? Doing what? Where? How? And number two, what are my unique talents? What are my gifts? Everybody's born with a set of gifts. But the problem is most people want their gift to be what somebody else is. Identify your own gifts. Mm -hmm. Identify your own talents. Make a list of what you're talented at. Nobody wants to go to a restaurant where the person that, that's making the pizza ought to be an accountant because they love working with numbers and they're just there because they need the money and they're throwing the dough up in the air. Number three, identify what the world needs. What does the world need? And number four, what can I be paid for? And it comes back in full circle. What you could be paid for is identifying what the world needs, knowing your unique talents and what you love spending your time with. That's the formula that they've been using in Japan for thousands of years. They teach the kids from a young age all the way up through high school. And most of the 10% of the people on the planet that love what they do come from Japan. Really? Okay. So let me give those questions again, starting from the beginning. What do I want? What would that do for me specifically? What do I desire? What makes me itch? What do I love doing? What are my unique talents? What does the world need? The last question shouldn't even be in there, but I'll give it anyways. What can I be paid for? And, and diving into that last question, because of course, many people are like, yeah, like I want to pursue my passion but I have to pay my bills. I want to do this, but I have to take care of my family. And, and I actually had a discussion the other, um, other week with also a couple of people from the BYLR community. And we talk about, okay, but how do you um, create from your passion, your, your full-time income? Because for example, I love my podcast, but for now I'm not making, I'm not making zero dollars. Right. So what I tell myself is like, I find a job that pays a full-time job that is fairly easy to do, uh, but enough to pay my bills. And I have time outside of that to focus on my passions and what I love to do. And until my passion has tripled or doubled my, my income uh, and I can have a steady income to pay my bills, I leave that job. I think that that's important to mention is that it's not like, oh, I'm going to pursue my passion now I leave my job and I do every, like I leave everything behind and I'm going to do this right now it, it's you have to have a certain flow but we are especially now in a time where you can make from every, I believe you from every passion you have whether that is you love crickets you love making a podcast or you love riding a horse or whatever you do you can make that a full-time income business right now and so I think that and that framework, what you just said, like, man, I recommend everyone to go through that. Yeah. When you, yeah. And you asked, you asked a question in there. So I want to answer it. And you, you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. You've heard that before. And that means that if you're currently working in a job that you don't like, it's important to bring three things to it before you leave there. Don't just leave what you're doing and, uh, and you have an income. 
You want to bring a, 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 a sense of acceptance, enjoyment, and enthusiasm. You have to force yourself. If you don't enjoy going to this thing, you're not enthusiastic about it, you have to fake it until you really make it so for you. So acceptance, enjoyment, and enthusiasm are important to bring to something that you don't enjoy. Don't leave the thing because it's putting food on the table. Figure out what you absolutely love spending your time doing. Start bringing that into your life like the podcast. Keep the other job to keep the lights on. And then you slowly tip the scales. Um, and don't be impulsive. Just quit the other thing that's bringing the money until eventually you're manifesting this other thing. It's such a high energy level vibration and frequency that it is your number one love, your number one passion, and you want to work at it every day. I mean, who, who wants to have the Monday morning blues, Wednesday hump days, TGI Fridays, and week freaking ends? Nobody. No, I, I, I fully agree. I fully agree. I mean, life can be so much fun, but there, yeah. And that's, I think that's something that when you said, coming back to a little bit, what you said earlier is about if you do something you're passionate about, it doesn't really feel like working what you're doing, right? Um, but it doesn't underestimate the fact that it takes hard work and it takes like for you, like you're a coach, you, are, uh, you love the meditation aspect, you love transforming and inspiring other people, but I'm sure like filing your taxes is not something you're excited about, you know? So I'm just, but if your why is bigger than the actual task, you're willing to overcome it to get there. And I think that is, um, something to keep in mind and, and also i would love to have your opinion about that is that um yes you pursue your passion yes you do something that you desire but that doesn't mean it doesn't take hard work to get there or it doesn't have moments in your life that you feel like man should yeah. i go or should i not should i you know should i come overcome these obstacles or not but it's more about if your why is big enough you're willing to do it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I've heard somebody say, if, if the why is big enough, the what will take care of itself. And the what is the work, the daily grind. Now, listen, I just wrote a trilogy of novels in a week and a half in May. They poured through me. My greatest passions in life are the meditation, the coaching people, writing books and speaking. My mission is my purpose and my purpose is to help others find theirs. These books took hours and hours and weeks and months at the computer grinding away. But every time my fingers we're on those keys and I write every day, every single day. I'm writing the fourth book in this quadrilogy. It's a series. Mm -hmm. And the first book is available on Amazon. It's called Train of Transformation. Mm -hmm. What's important to understand that is that not only does it take work, it takes something more than that. It takes every ounce of who you are. Every single cell of your being, every fiber of your being, you have to pour 100 million percent into this thing that you desire or else it probably will not manifest the way that you want it to. Mm -hmm. And I call that positive obsession. It's yep. being so obsessed with this thing that you can't not do it because you're being driven by a force from within you. If you don't do it, it will kill you. It will literally kill you. And that relates to what's known as regrets, which most people die with their greatness and their magnificence 
inside of them. They take their magnificence, their ideas, their talents, their abilities with them to their graves because they're too scared to bring them to life. So it's that positive obsession that's important and taking the time every day to put it towards your craft. I'd like to use an example, um, the, the rapper Eminem. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, you were talking earlier about that authenticity, right? And that person coming from their heart. The guy's a genius, listen to his music. You could tell that that came out from his soul. That's what it, he didn't just spend an hour a week, you know, writing some songs, some lyrics. It's like every day, all day. And he went to work at night yeah. in the factory to put food on the table until that thing tips. There's a tipping point. There's a book called The Tipping Point by Ma Malcolm Gladwell. Just to summarize what the tipping point is, and I'll use Sarah Blakely as an example with Spanx. Yeah. She had $5,000 in the bank. She had a red backpack. And she was completely positively obsessed to make a difference in women's lives by using an undergarment to transform them. And she pounded the pavement, knocked on doors. And I believe it was Neiman Marcus allowed her to come to Chicago. She had a meeting with somebody and they turned her away. And she said to the lady, can you come with me to the dressing room? The lady put on the Spanx and that was it. But that's what it takes. And, and to tie into that is like, don't expect results like in a month, in a year and, or even some five, like it took Sarah seven years. Like, what is it? How long? Like, oh no, she was the facts. She did the facts thing seven years, but it takes way longer than that to what she's built right now. And I think for me personally, it was like the, like I have the eagerness and I want to go fast and I want to go far, but sometimes that can can take you to a place where you're just so focused on the result and like if you don't get it it discourages you but if you look at all successful and people in the world man it takes years to build a legacy it takes years to build a successful business it takes years and i think now the having the patience and having the the ability to be obsessed on a daily basis and i see that as like it's not a task is it's, it's your lifestyle basically becomes your lifestyle that's when um there will at some point whether that is in a month a year 10 years sometimes even longer than that you make a change and there, then that's when the tipping point comes from so but i truly think that tying into your passion and an obsession it's like it is a certain belief that's different than anything else you know And, and I think that you have a belief in, in changing life through transformational coaching and meditation. Uh, I have a belief I, that I want to change life through inspiration, through conversation, but it's a different belief than I just want something. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what I mean by that is like, let's say I, I, I want this water bottle to get healthier, but it's, it's just a tool. But if I'm saying like, no, I'm fully believe with my whole body, I fully believe with everything I have that I can, this way I can make a difference. Then that's going to hit at some point, something will happen in your life that you attract or that transforms that you actually fly. Let, away. Me, let me bring a couple things into that because you're really on point. Three things, patience, time and effort patience you alluded to it could be a year five years ten years seven years spanks patience time putting in a ton of time and effort constant effort jesse in build your life resume he talks about constant forward motion never looking back never looking in the rear view mirror constantly looking through the front windshield he also talks about in this community having a don't stop, won't stop mentality. Don't stop, won't stop mentality. And some of the listeners that are listening to this today, 
or whenever you listen to it that are in the calendar club, go into the app. And if you're not in the calendar club, look up um, buildyourliferesume.com. Look up Jesse Itzler's calendar club because in there you'll find the original Build Your Life resume course. And one of his videos talks about the process. This is, this is gold, the process of getting a goal. And if you want a master class in how to achieve a goal, you, it's worth the money to be part of the calendar club and build your life resume just to watch that video that Jesse Itzler talks about the process of getting a goal. I'm not going to say anything about it. I want you guys to investigate it, watch it. That will do it for you. I will put the link in the description and uh, on so people can just like copy and paste the link and just go go from there. Um, people like to have it easy. So I, I take that. I will, I will make it a little easier, but I, I fully agree. And if I say that, like, man, becoming part of the community, becoming part of um, build your life resume of, of like, even I have another community I'm part of, like, it changes your life, like being surrounded and hearing people speak that truly went through so many experiences and are willing to teach you from those experiences and trigger you, man, if you don't get triggered by that and want to change your life or want to make more about your life or anything like that, I, I don't know what else you need. Like, <laughs> like that is something that, uh, uh, I was super passionate about, but I, yeah, man, that's, that's like you said, that's gold. I love that. Even like when it comes to, I think one thing that ties into that too is accountability is how do you, because inspiration is one thing. Motivation is one thing. I can watch a video and get inspired, but then it's about what action am I going to take after I watch that video, you know? And so holding yourself accountable and, but, but even more, how am I going to hold myself accountable? And one of the tips I can give other people is like, get an accountability partner, man, having someone that you have to report to what you did on a daily basis or that week or write it down on, on, on the calendar or, or send a text messages, it gives you a sort of responsibility and willingness to do it. And an example I have for that is um, I'm getting mentored by, by some other people outside of this, outside of the community, outside of my podcast. And literally every day I'm listening to audios and I'm, I'm reading books. And every day I send them an update about the audio I listen to, my ta main takeaways from the audio, my main takeaways from the, from the part of the book I listen to, and even an update from just my personal growth. Like I had a great conversation with, with David today. We talked about this and this or some other stuff I've learned. And then underneath there, it's like I have here in short, what's my goal? This is my goal. This is where I'm going to. So and having that person um in front of me that I send to a daily update gives me also an accountability like no matter what happens through the day that's something I have to do and doing that on a daily basis it's a small thing but if you do that 90 days in a row a year in a row a month in a row man you've read, read maybe I think I will be on 20 like 12 books or something because you know I will have listened to hundreds and hundreds of audios and that also creates just a mindset and, and cuts it in such tangible pieces to work towards your goal. So with effort, with what else was it? <laughs> patience. Effort, patience uh, holds time. also. Sorry. Time. Effort, patience and time is a, like I would tie in accountability to that, too. Excellent. Um, so yeah, that's just a side note, but uh, yeah, you trigger a lot of inspiration in me. So I'm <laughs> just pouring some stuff out right there. I'm glad I love it. Yeah. Um, let's talk about a little bit about your books. Actually, you mentioned it already a little bit. You're writing uh, four books. Um, you one is already on Amazon. Um, it's a novel. It's called Train of Transformation. Could you explain a little bit um, about the book and your intention with the book? Certainly. Well, probably three or four years ago in meditation, a voice came to me and said, you are to write a book called The Five Flags of Transformation. I said, oh, okay. 
And it then said FLAGS, F-L-A-G-S, is an acronym for forgiveness, love, acceptance, gratitude, and surrender. I said, oh, great. Thanks for giving me this nonfiction self-help title and subtitle. I'm going to get to work. I had no patience with it, but a lot of effort and a lot of time went into it, although it wasn't flowing. Finally, I sought out a mentor in the form of a book coach who's been at it for 40 years, an unbelievable man by the name of Tom Bird, like a, like a bird that flies. And Tom Bird uh, has been coaching wannabe authors for 40 years and has tens of thousands of authors. You can actually find him at tombird.com. And so I connected with him and he actually taught me this process of writing that's an unfoldment, the spiritual unfoldment of the soul, if you will, and that we all have what is known as this divine author within. So this divine author within, for those that are interested in writing a book, and I'm happy to speak with anybody in this community or anybody that's listening, and truly how to write a book from start to finish. Because a lot of people that pick up a book to read, well, hold on, actually, let me backtrack. Most people that purchase books, they never even read them, number one. Number two, if you open it up to read it, you don't finish it. And number three, those that are interested in writing books don't know how. And then when they start the process of writing a book, they don't finish for certain reasons. And then if they are at that point where they're going to finish the book, they don't even know what to do next. Like, how do I get a person to lay out and design the book? So it looks like a book. How do they get it on Amazon? How do I self-publish? How do I find an agent to publish through a publishing house? So I've been through all of that. So if anybody's interested, I'm not, I won't charge you. I just want to pay it forward because I love this process so much. So you'll give them my contact information, Daff, in the in the in the, yeah, in the everything podcast. In the description. Yeah, so yeah. contact me. I've had a lot of people in the community that are writing books contact me because they didn't know how to finish the book and get it published. So I helped them with that. But so the process he took me through was incredible. And I started working with him May 2021. And in a week and a half, a trilogy poured out through me. And it's about a main character, the first book, who goes through um, this process of self-discovery and transformation himself. He meets incredible teachers and characters in the form of a Saint Scarlet Macaw, an ancient, beautifully colored bird. It's one of his teachers. Another teacher is a crystal, like a stone, who contacts this character called the Sacred Elder, who meets this main character it, in a forest that has these ancient trees and uh, they end up on, on this train that, and they learn about forgiveness and love, gratitude and surrender and acceptance. They go through an ancient closed um, uh, amusement park that the rides have been closed for centuries that they go on certain rides and learn, they go through the ancient tunnel of love and learn about love and so it's an amazing journey. People that are interested in growth and personal growth and spiritual growth um, will love this book. People said, oh, it's kind of like the Celestine Prophecy and you know, The Way of the Peaceful Warrior by Dan Millman. And I said, yeah, I read those decades ago. Thanks for the compliment. You know, I love those guys. I know Dan Millman personally. Um, and then the second book, takes off where the first one ends because it's to be continued. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the main character goes on this journey, ends up in Nepal and Kathmandu and meets another character who becomes part of these five characters that are known as the um, Infinity Star team. And they have these uh, journeys together and more magic and transformation and self-growth and personal growth and 
then the third book. And now I'm, I'm actually deep in the fourth book right now. I was typing before we got on and we'll see where this one ends up. And what's happening is we're working. When I say we, there's a team that I've surrounded myself with. Um, who we're working on workshops, so weekend workshops and seminars where I'm going to be bringing the tools and the principles from these books to weekend programs so people can come and learn how to get rid of the shackles that they have on their wrists and ankles and the, the, the tight, thick shell that's around their body and their being. They feel so weighed down and they have the worry and the regret and the anxiety and all these things so I can teach people through these weekend programs and help them rediscover the life that they were meant to live through joy and happiness and fulfillment and love and acceptance and all this great stuff. So we could truly live into our birthright, who we came here to truly be, to be filled with happiness and have, remember um, what it means to have fun. Remember what it means to have fun. That's a huge one. Yeah. So that's what we're, that's what we're up to, Daph. Oh my God, so many things, so many great, oh, oh my goodness, like, it's, it's, it brings me so much joy, like, talking with people that have a purpose of helping others and breaking, breaking barriers, basically, and I think that's so important, um, because, like, we talked about earlier, there's just so many things, like, attacking us as, as people and feel like we have to fit in certain ways or we go through certain traumas and it, it shapes us in a way that instead of really fully enjoying life and, and, and being on a high vibration, I think most people live more in, in, in fear or in, 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 yeah, within walls in front of them, you know, and the fact that you want to or already do help people break through that and see the joy of life again, get more clarity, get more focus and really attract things. Um, what they want in life uh, is, is super cool. Uh, so thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. Of course, of course, everyone who I think can add value is going to be on this podcast. So um, I do have another question, which is absolutely not related to anything we just talked about but I always ask everyone that um what do you like to have on your toast on what toast what do I like to have on my toast nope that's the last question I ask everyone like on my bread or bagel or whatever you oh you got it (laughs) you have to go with bagel because I'm from New York originally Uh, okay okay so first of all it's an everything bagel Uh uh-huh lightly toasted Mm-hmm. with a perfect smear of cream cheese but it's vegan cream cheese because I don't really do the dairy mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so it's vegan cream cheese and then I like to put on some capers because okay. they, they stick on to the cream cheese yep. like glue and then I put on some raw onion and then I put on a nice little layer of lox you know, that salmon, the lox. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was already thinking you're going towards salmon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Put the salmon on there, that lox, the smoked salmon, the lox, and a nice uh, ripe piece of green romaine lettuce. I'll put the lettuces, the lettuce will be on top, and there's two halves of identical like that. And I don't want to know about anything else for about 45 minutes. I'm in all my glory there. <laughs> That's very specific. And I love it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's, that's it. That's how we're going to end it today with lightly toasted everything bagel, vegan cream cheese, capris, onion, salmon, and a crispy romaine lettuce. Let's end it with everybody visualizing me taking a bite into it and being in heaven. Oh my goodness, I'm already, I'm getting hungry already. So <laughs> wonderful. Yeah, well, um, just to like finish it up, thank you so much for uh, taking your time to be on a podcast and sharing uh, your knowledge with us. And uh, I look forward to uh, after I edit everything to upload everything and see what the reactions are, uh, because I think that a lot of people can add a lot of value out of this. And there are some really cool, tangible steps that actually people can take 
to um to improve their lives basically because that's what we're all about inspiration through conversation through actually having things that that can implement in their lives so thank you for that and um yeah i, I don't really have anything else to say to be honest <laughs> you're welcome thank you so much thank you let me let me uh stop the recording